Hello, good evening everybody, and welcome to Angry Welshman Productions. I am the Angry Welshman, and tonight I'm not joined by anybody because my partner in crime has left me to go and play with a steam engine on the Neen Valley, and I'm very upset. I'm not really. Uh, good for him. Sam has gone to uh, go and play with 45596 Bahamas, as you might have seen in the... Um, the new loading sequence or the new uh, waiting sequence for the channel. Let me know what you thought about that. The last well five minutes of the live stream. Um, that was. It's not it taking very long to make, but uh, I'm quite proud of it. I thought it was uh, quite good. Anyway, so we are on the Dufferin Lecky Light Railway, and the reason I wanted to come back and have another look at this route is because. I believe since uh, the last live stream I did that Trolley Fodder, who is the fellow who made it, did a couple of scenery updates. Uh, I don't think it was anything substantial, but I think there was a few updates that he did. Uh, but also the main thing, as you see here, is the Chorus Railway number 7, I think. Is it a tattoo class loco? Um, when, I, when I did the original live stream with this route... I wanted to drive this loco. The reason being, it is the nicest and best looking lo narrow gauge loco in train sim. Um, out of all of them that are available, this is probably the nicest one. But the problem I always had with it was, well, driving it was a real pain. It just, the physics on the loco just didn't seem to work properly. And maybe other people have had more luck. Uh, but on this particular route where you've got significant sections of 1 in 50 gradients, I just found it impossible to actually drive on this route. So, you know, forgive me as well because um, what I'm going to explain during this live stream... Oh, hang on, we're going to have to uh, stop here a sec and mess around with this set of points. Hang on, where is... where are we? Uh, no, actually, this, it was correct. We are here. There, let's just make sure that we've set it the right way, which I think we have. Okay, sometimes you just gotta get a bit of perspective when you're setting points, because uh, I find freeway points are quite difficult to, uh, to, to get right. So... Basically, I've been messing around. Some of you who've been following on the Facebook page are probably quite aware that I've put about 12 million posts up on the page where I've been messing around with the physics of the loco. The reason being, I wanted a loco which can haul you know, a decent load on this route because it is a steep route. You need a lot of steam. Oh my goodness. Okay, I was not expecting that this evening. Big J official has donated 30.99 Australian I believe it's Australian dollars to say a love letter to one of my favorite live streamers thank you for entertaining me throughout these lockdowns and self isolation remember to thrash the locos big j official thank you very much i was not expecting a, a super chat this early in the live stream thank you very much for that uh, your contributions as are everybody's you know helping to keep the channel going help keep buying dlc and other things to make live streams more fun. So thank you, sir. They also help buy me kebabs every now and then. I will admit that. Um, yeah, so going back to what I was saying, I was messing around with the physics. Basically, I wanted a loco that could actually haul a decent load on this route. Some people may argue and say, do you know what, that's not the right way to go about making mods for locos that you know, you're making it for a specific route rather than actually, um, you know, what the loco would have performed like. Now, the reason is, I honestly don't know what the loco performs like. And I'm not going to pretend that I'm any form of developer at all. I'm literally a guy who just found some documentation and started messing around with the physics. So, before anybody asks, will I release it? I won't release it, but I would you know, send people the files if they requested them. But I don't consider this to be a release in any way. Also, the thing I also would say, I take no responsibility if you go and start messing around with the physics files and mess up the loco, because it's very easily done, as I found out. 
Um, as you can see, I still haven't quite got it perfect because the Loka's blowing off like hell right now. I was messing around with the, the drafting effect, the total power, um, the blower setting was the main one. The reason being, I found that this engine just didn't... If you stopped, if you, you, know, if you were struggling on a gradient and you stopped, and you turned the blower on for a blow-up, it just did nothing. It did absolutely nothing, and it would take you like four years to raise steam. So, let's inject a bit of water while we are blowing off. I need to continue messing around because, as you can see, she's blowing off like crazy, even with a small fire. So, I still got some fiddling to do, but it is a lot better than it was. So, we've just collected uh, what I'm going to pretend is a brake van. And we're going to roll our way to the docks. So this is, what's the name, Penryn Docks. On Trolley Fodder's magnificent route. Uh, we need to make sure all the points are set for the correct road. Which is there. And we're going to go and uh, take some empty slate wagons up to the quarry. Right, the road is set. I don't think when I did the last live stream of this route, I don't think I actually uh, showed you the docks. So I'm just shutting off the blower, shutting the dampers, because she's uh, rather excessively blowing steam here, I think. As you can see, I still need to continue messing around with the... Uh, with the physics. Oh god, hang on. Brakes. Just realised I need to put this, um... Oh, I need to put this brake van somewhere, don't I? Right. Let's go forward a little bit. So those of you who um, haven't got this logo, I believe it's the Chorus Railway Pack, which is available on Steam. Created by Rivet... Is it Rivet Games? Or No, sorry, Skyhook Games made this one. And it is a really lovely little loco. And it's one of very few narrow gauge locos that I enjoy driving. Although, up until now, I struggled with it on this particular route because it was, uh, well, impossible to drive with any decent load. Oscar R has donated £1.79, says, haven't caught a stream for a, one, for a while. Looking good. Thank you very much, sir. Again, thank you for the super chat. Your donations are very welcome. King Ori, is this a fictional route? Yes, this is a fictional route. But it's actually one of the best routes available on the Steam Workshop. So my strong advice is that you uh, go and download it. The link is in the description below. Anyone else getting stutters? Um, you might be getting stutters. Although it's, it is saying that I've got a good connection for the live stream strength from my end. So I don't actually know. It could possibly be the internet. Or if you're talking about visual things, the root itself does have these texture files which are stuttering a little bit. So I suppose it could be that. Right, let's see if I can actually fit in this siding. I mean... Uh, I did show off this route a little bit before, but I don't think we saw the docks. Brakes, brakes, down. It is such... Okay. Why this? The points don't want to switch. Let's go back a little... Oh, just stop, 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 stop! Right. Try again. There we are. Great Westerner, it's blowing off too much. Yes, it is. Uh, that is also that's because I've been messing around with the physics and I haven't got it quite 100% right. 
so I need to change that because there's a thing, an effect called the drafting effect, and it's how how easily the fire burns. So if the fire burns really easily, then of course you're gonna just make steam like crazy. And there's also things to do with the boiler in the the all the physics settings. And I was playing around with numbers, which I probably shouldn't have been. So and there we go. I've overfilled the boiler again. So she might stop blowing off quite so much if I leave the cylinder drains open. She might be a bit quieter for you. So it's going to be quite a quiet live stream, I think, for once. I've just I've wanted to have a play with narrow gauge stuff for a long time. You know, shunting up and down with little slate wagons. We've got a um, a gravity train to take later as well. That's going to be interesting on this route. So as you see, there's 20 empty slate wagons. Now, when I've run this local on this route before, I've struggled with like five or six. I've really struggled getting up the hills. So... I wanted to modify the physics just so I could take, you know, a reasonable length train, such as this, up the line. And it would help if I didn't slam into it so hard that it shifts. Come on. Are we coupled up? No. Oh, don't tell me we can't couple up now. Am I going to have to mess up? Yeah. Why this? Well, this is just great. Can't couple up. Right. Um, I think we're going to have to mess around with things then if it won't which I find it incredible that it won't couple up to them so let's go into the scenario editor train sims let me down again <laughs> here we go and I apologise in advance but we are going to have to cheat because I'm not doing all that again. Right. Let's see. Why won't you couple up? See, it couples up fine there. But we're going to need to couple up to things in the future. So, let's put you there a sec. Slate wagon. Tipper. Right. No idea why it won't couple up. Let's just try again with the scenario. There. Look at that. Look. Coupled up. <laughs> okay. Train sim is just weird. Right, we'll shut the dampers, shut the blower. Loose fitted train. It should couple fine, shouldn't it? You would have thought so. I mean, I've not had any problems before. Train sim was just being weird, which it likes to be quite often. We're going to have to make sure all the points are set, because they won't be. One, two, three, four. There we go. 
And we're going to need our pretend brake fan. Oh, I love uh, that all the buffers like buff together. And the thing to remember is this is a very steep line. And, well, wagons don't like being brought to a stop. J Law says, don't derail. Well, I will try. I will be saving continuously. Watch your not couple up to this one now. And the thing to remember as well, we only have 140 gallons of water, so range isn't exactly on our side. How steep are the gradients? Well, there are significant sections of 1 in 50. And I believe there are even some sections which are steeper. So I'm going dead slow up to the buffers here. And we've coupled up. Right then. She's ready to go. Let's put the lamp on. Uh, okay, since I reset train sim, boiler pressure is actually okay. I wonder if it's because I turned all the blower and everything off. Because uh, before it was blowing like crazy. Anyway, uh, let's just make sure all the roads are set. Da -da 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 -da. That was actually correct, so I should have left that alone. Right, the main line. And, yeah, we're all set to head up the main line. Here we go, chaps. So what I'm going to do just before we leave, shovel a bit of coal on. Now, the thing I found about this loco is, uh, with it being quite a small firebox, is don't overfill the fire. So as you see, it's already up to 122 pounds. Let's put a couple more in. They are 100, 125 pounds of fire. We'll leave it like that. And we'll open the dampers as well. And we'll start going. And as you can see, from the modified physics, if I just move the screen here, if you can see it on the top left, the steam generation rate starts rising already. Now that's because of the steam that's going from the piston straight up the chimney through the blast pipe and that helps to draw the fire um, which helps create more steam in the boiler by making it hotter now this before with the physics that it, this loco had before it didn't really achieve that very well and certainly on a route like this it just wasn't enough to keep enough steam basically to haul 20 wagons up the hill okay I don't know what happened there we just stopped Okay, when I look back, the loco stops, and when I look ahead, it moves. I think train sim is broke. I have never seen this before in train sim. Look, I look ahead, and it goes. I look back, and it doesn't want to go. Okay, well, train sim's broke. So I'm very sorry, guys. We're going to have to restart uh, train sim. What a fantastic way to start the live stream. Train sim, you are absolutely fantastic. So what I'm going to have to do when train sim decides it's going to load... I'm going to have to stick the uh, the waiting screen on, on the live stream. And we'll have to take a few minutes of uh, a break while Train Sim restarts. Because it has decided it doesn't want to play ball. 
maybe this is what I get for messing with the physics. Is it that any change to the physics it breaks uh, breaks train sim for you? Come on, train sim. You're being an ass. So we'll be back in a couple of moments, guys. Hello everybody, we are back in the game, and hopefully this time 
will be all right. So let's see if this loco decides it's actually going to run. again. Okay, I'm looking aft, I'm looking back, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down this time, so that's good. I'm assuming it was just a weird train sim bug. Let's uh, turn off the F500 and get some screenshots or do some line siding. What do you think? So, going back to what we were saying, really I always felt that um, just hauling like five or six wagons just wasn't really that realistic for a slate carrying railway. Especially when you consider you know, the likes of the Talaflane or the um, uh, Chorus even or the Festiniog, they would have had quite long and substantial slate trains. So I figured setting a standard of 20 wagons per rake or per formation would be a reasonable place to uh, to get started. Since we're blowing off steam now, we'll uh, use the injectors. So we're going to roll through the station, go in the correct platforms. Great Westerner says, are there water towers on route? Yes, there are. And I certainly hope there are. Oh, God. Overfilled the boiler. 1.21. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. 1 in 5 with 20. Good luck. It's 1 in 50. Not 1 in 5, 1 in 50. But uh, just remember, I modified the physics. And the reason I modified the physics was to make it possible. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I've i got my own romantic idea for this railway having a couple of these engines, like a fleet of four or five of them, operating a combined passenger service and slate carrying service to the docks there. The Dufferin Railway, the Dufferin Lecky Light Railway Company. I cheated. Well... You say I cheated, but, you know, I modified the engine to suit the railway. Essentially, you know, this, uh, when you buy a loco for a real railway, I suppose that's what you do, isn't it? You know, if your loco is delivered and it can't perform as expected, you have to make modifications to it. As we move out of this town of Penryn, we might find that uh, the frame rates improve slightly because there is an awful lot of scenic assets here which causes the game to slow down. But you will see, for those of you who haven't actually seen this route before, you're in for a real treat, because trolley fodder's work is unbelievable. It is out of this world. Let's see, hope everything... Highland Winter Wolf has just donated $5. Thank you very much, Highland Winter Wolf. Very much appreciated. Uh, hope everything's going well. It's been a while since I caught a stream. Good looking route and loco. Also, why not a narrow gauge 0660? Uh, mainly because I don't think there is one. Unless you're on about that. Is it a French or Swiss one? Again, I think that is um, far too big for this the trap gauge. Right. 
So we're on a level gradient now because we're just about to start going up the incline. We've got full, full water in the boiler. And we're blowing off. So we're in a good position to attack the first hill. Aaron Bradley says, sorry Brady, didn't you stream this route like three years ago? Yes, I did. I did stream this route. Was it two years ago? 2019, I think. I'm not going to thrash it just yet, Big J Official, because we are not on the hill yet. But as you can see, up there is the first of the 1 in 50 gradients. And you can see, just looking at it, though, that is a hefty gradient. So, speed's already dropping off, so we are going to have to start thrashing any moment now. Here we go. So just to prove I'm not making this up, this is a 1 in 60 gradient here, and the speed is lifting. We are at full reg, and she is actually uh, lifting the speed. 14.3 miles an hour, with 20 wagons on. Northern Soul Express says, is this going to be a new planned series with this loco? Yes, it is. I'm going to uh, make a little uh, spin-off series with this route, I think. I was planning to use some other locos from the Festiniog Railway Pack, but they just... I don't know. I just don't really like them. John Smith, have you modified the route or is that RW Enhancer? Yes, RW Enhancer Pro is on. So I'm now injecting water because we're blowing off like crazy. I think I need to turn the bloom thing down as well. One in 50 gradient now. The speed is just starting to drop a little. over the hills narrow gauge uh, kind of it's not really going to be over the hills related it's just it's going to be its own thing it's just going to be a it's because I, I want something like a not a spin off but just something not related to over hills just, just do something you know oh, we're at 15 miles an hour we're actually doing far better than my test run You see the uh, steam generation rate is far higher than the usage, which means we are making a lot of steam. So I do have a, a couple of more modifications to make to the physics files, just to reduce that, just to fine-tune it a little bit. I think we're just coming off the first gradient now, approaching Dufferin Lecky. We'll just apply the brakes a little. Just to go through the station of Dufferin Lecky. So as you can see, using the local brake only does pretty much nothing. The only thing as well is on this route, I don't think the signals work. Is there a gradient coming up? You see this route is just so personal. You're practically driving through people's gardens here, you know, it's a very well made route.
I think we just hit a gradient. Yep, yeah, 1 in 50. There we go. Still blowing off. We still on the gradient? No, we're just coming off the gradient now. Just ease back on the rig. Let's stick the uh, injector on. Use up a bit of that steam. Uh, we're going past the Anisha. Anisha is the next station. Dan the Thomas fan says, do you use Railworks Enhancer? Yes, Railworks Enhancer Pro. I did make some change to it before I started, but it seems to have reverted back for some reason, which I'm not sure why. Oh dear. Maya killed it. Put too much water in the boiler, I stopped focusing. Yeah, this is a scene I love. This farm scene, or the allotment, looks so good. The gradient here. Oh, we're just coming off the uh, gradient now, approaching Anisha. We have to whistle at every le level crossing, of course. Ooh, traction engine. Hello. And we'll uh, we'll take a little breather just at this station because I want to show you the town. Roll into the station now. The thing I'd like to say about Trolley Fodder's Roots, if you go on the Steam Workshop and you follow what he's up to, you will find his roots... It's not just a railway, because an awful lot of routes that uh, people make, they build a railway and then put landscape and scenery around the railway, whereas... I've always got the feeling from Trolley Fudder's roots that he builds the scenery and then adds a railway to it. Even if that's just what I think, it, it's just how it comes across. So we'll just stop here at this signal for a moment because I want to show you the town. So as you see, stopping with this train is quite difficult. I mean, just look at that in terms of scenery. 
Yeah. There are not many routes in Train Sim where you feel, or certainly where I feel, as immersed in the route as we are right now. And that is quite high praise, I think. So many routes out there, you feel you're driving a train set. Whereas a route like this is just covered head to toe in details. I mean, look at this, this alleyway. If you put your camera here, you're actually walking through an alleyway. It's not just uh, been plonked there and it goes somewhere. It goes to a street behind you. I love that and all these other details here. Absolutely love it. Everything has a reason for being there. Right, since uh, our engine is pretty hot and bothered by the sound of it. Shovel a bit more coal. As we remember, we don't uh, we don't need to shovel an awful lot because it's blowing off like crazy. Head out. I think we're about halfway up the line. It's not the longest railway, but it's certainly one of the most detailed. What's the gradient here? Not much. Apologies if I'm not uh, talking overly much tonight. I don't really need to, to be honest. It's uh, I'm trying to let the route itself do the talking. Sounds like my Discord is going mad as well. Progress 15 mile an hour speed limit yet. Yeah. And we're coming up to a 5 mile an hour speed limit for the crossing. Which we've got no hope of achieving because uh, we've got a, fully, a full train of empty wagons pushing against us. Sorry, chaps, but I am going to have to do some uh, line siding here because, uh, well, what can I say? <laughs> the scenery, man. A few people have commented about the frame rates. Unfortunately, this route, because of the sheer amount of assets, is a frame killer. That's uh, what it's just what you you have to pay the price for having a, a well detailed route.
Now we're on the approach to Langatrin, which is the station on the lake. Big J official says this route disowns many payware routes. I've said it several times actually, this route is far, this is payware quality, this is what payware quality should be. But it's also not, because this is an example of what happens when you have the time to commit to a route and, you know, the enthusiasm for it as well when you're not motivated by just money. This is uh, trolley fodder's work and every job he's done you can just see how motivated he is to get it right and to get it looking good. Right, now, so that was the Dufferin Lecky part of the route. This part now, the next mile or two, is the extension to the Slate Quarry. And this is where it's going to get interesting. Because it's quite a gradient now, 1 in 55. But it's a long slog. So looking back, make sure all the couplings are taut. Thrash it. Here we go then. And this is also where the scenery gets pretty interesting. So I don't think this loco would have achieved this uh, without the modifications I made to the physics, but um, I do need to continue because as you can see we've been blowing off pretty much since we left the docks, so there is some more improvements to be made. And I'm also going to show you the most impressive part of the route.
There we go. We've made it, chaps. This is almost journey's end for us. So it's not a very long line. There's a coal mine on the left side of the the lake here, and then there's a the quarry reception sidings on the right. Yeah, I feel we got permission. And there's our steed waiting for the return trip. Now, I haven't actually rehearsed this, guys. So I have no idea how this next bit's going to go. But the idea with the story, the background of the different lecky is that uh, the locos like this bring the empty wagons up to the quarry. And they leave them here. And develop wheel flats at the same time. Come on, stop. There we go. We've arrived. Now it's time to make the return trip. But the question is, will we make the return trip without a push? Because I've got this gut feeling we're going to have to have a push. Oh, maybe not. We can use the power just to give that little bit of a shove. And maybe that shove will be enough to get us onto the gradient. Come on. Maybe not. Right, so the engine's going to have to give us a little bit of a shove. So let's uncouple. What could possibly go wrong? Right. Uh, where are we? Yep. Let's move our way onto the uh, correct road. So as you see, uh, up ahead there has clearly been a disaster at some point. Yes, I've been here before by the look of it. But also there are statically modelled uh, inclines. Let's have a quick look at the inclines just before we head off. So this is probably one of the most impressive things ever attempted in train sim, I think. It is an actual simulated uh, incline. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. But visually, it's all there. All the cables and everything. And also, he's included all these slate levels, which are impressive. And one day when we have quarry huns let locos, you know, you'll be able to work all the inclines, work all the uh, all the levels. Or you may you might not be able to work the inclines rather, but you could certainly work the levels. I have messed around trying to get this to work going down these inclines. It's just it's just not really possible in train sim. Such a fun route. I mean, look at this. We're at the top here, top of the slate level, looking down. What a view. Now let's go shove that uh, train down the hill.
Whoops. Boilers overflowed again. Oopsie. At least it's going to be quiet now. Oh! <laughs> Stopped with inches to spare. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. That was weird. Let's try again. There we go. We're on our way, guys. And it looks like, um... Okay, the chorus engine is coming with us. Why not? Let's put the brakes on. There we go. We did it. We sorted it. What could possibly go wrong? So we're on the hill now, let's put the brakes on a bit. Because I don't think we want to go too fast. And as it turns out, putting the brakes on does absolutely nothing. So we're going to have to manually... We have no handbrakes. We have nothing with brakes. Okay, we are a runaway. We are actually a runaway. Okay, this is not going as well as I was hoping. We've become an actual runaway. Oh god. Oh god. Oh good god. I'm, I'm intrigued to see how far that we could get. Oh, that's tight. Okay, it turns out you're supposed to put um, braked wagons or something on these gravity trains. Oh well. In for a penny, in for a pound. Let's blow the whistle at every station and make sure we get a clear road through. Right, let's just make sure that we got a good road through the station. Yep, we're good there. How about there? Yeah. This station is going to be a potential disaster. How far are we going? Sorry, that's as far as we can go. Well, we made it through the first station. We've slowed down a bit. I mean, this is... Actually, we need to take the brakes off thinking about it because this bit is actually uh, uphill, so we need to potentially consider we may lose the speed. Oh my god, we're slowing down. We're gonna stop. Come on, we gotta make it over this gradient. Come on. Well, that didn't go so well. Okay. Right, well, we we're, this is the first time I've ever tried it. I think we're going to need a loco.
It might be that gravity trains won't work on this route. After all. After all that. Yeah, we're going to have to use the engine to give it another shove, I think, over this last bit of the hill. Finally panicked there. Put the brakes on too much. Oh my god. Okay. Let's find out where these trucks actually are. Oh, they've just come to a stand. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that was a hard hit. Here we go, then. I'm not going to lie, I wasn't expecting to have quite an uphill push here.
just realised this engine's out of water. Will we make it? Come on. Oh, don't tell me it's still downhill. Or uphill, rather. Oh, and we're going into... Uh... Yeah. I think we're going to need the engine again. Looks like we are. Where's the engine? Oh, at this rate, we might as well have just kept uh, kept the engine coupled on. Okay, train sims doing weird stuff. Yep, yeah, there it is. Welcome to Trainception again. I gotta be honest with you, this route surprised me tonight because I thought it was pretty much all downhill this way. It turns out there's a big old section of uphill before you get to the downhill section. Jerry says, I hear crisps. Yes, you do. I has crisps. I guess it's after this next station that it goes back to downhill then.
So we're just basically pushing until we get on the gradient, which I think is after the station. It's actually not a bad place to drop the loco here, if you think about it. Just get through the station. Let's get the speed on. And that's it. I think we're on the gradient. So we'll put the brakes on the loco. We'll stop here by the signal box. Oh, yeah. That's it. We're on our way. But hey! Thank you, uh, number seven. So I've learned something new about the route tonight. Okay, we are now on the go. Speed's picking up slowly, making our way down the hill to the docks. What gradient are we on right now? 1 in 80. 19.8 miles an hour, that's not bad. Look at that, we're actually slowing down as we're approaching Duffer and Lecky. I haven't applied the brakes at all yet. Uh, I said that too quick, didn't I? Approaching Duffer and Lecky. Speed's really picking up now. Approaching Dufferin Lecky at 23 miles per hour.
Speed's picking up now, 23 miles an hour. And I think this is the steepest section of the line, 1 in 50 to Esgegailiog. Esgegailiog. We got the green signals all the way. This is it. This is the end of the steep section, I think. Yeah. Oh crap, we're gonna go the wrong way. Oh god. See, now if we'd have gone through the other platform, we probably would be alright going through there at high speed. But that was the last really steep section. Once we get around this corner, we're on the flat, and then it's a little bit of uphill to the docks. So that might be enough to actually uh, take the speed off, ready for the to go into the docks. Yeah, we're losing speed. I think we're almost at the, yeah, the 1 in 90 section uphill. So we're losing the speed now, coming around the corner. 10 miles an hour. And I would, I would say that was a pretty successful gravity train. I didn't break at all going down there. Apart from going the wrong way through one of the platforms, which... Uh, yeah, it did look a little bit uh, crazy, didn't it, at one point. Uh, there we go. So what would happen now is a loco would come out and meet the gravity train and take it onto the docks. However, I am going to have to end the live stream there, with the train rolling back the wrong way. Uh, sorry about that, I'm going to have to cut it short. Uh, gotta go. Thank you very much for watching everybody. Rate, comment, like and subscribe and hope to see you again soon. Goodbye everyone.